Well, for myself, I got started looping back in the 90s. I found a little pedal called the uh, Lexicon Jam Man. It was actually a rack-mounted uh, thing that I still have it. Um, came with a little dual momentary foot switch, which uh, triggered the loops, and um, it was very honest. That's what I liked about it. Oh, the youngest looper ever is here tonight. This is great. I love this. <laughs> Welcome, infant looper. This is great. <laughs> oh man, that's fantastic. Um, so I, I got started, and, went, and uh, I really did. I felt like an infant when I first started using it. I, I, I just really felt like the looper had a few messages for me right off the bat. Number one was. Uh, my timing was terrible. Uh, number two was uh, my ideas were not worth recording. And number three was practice, basically. Those were the three messages that it had for me. And perhaps those are the three messages it has for, for many who try to pick it up. And so I thought, well, the first one seemed like something I could, I could at least do something about immediately. It was, it was trying to get better at timing. And timing is really key, especially on this looper, uh, which really is quite honest. Whatever you, uh, whatever you step into the foot switch, uh, timing-wise, that's what you're kind of happy, that's what you have to live with. And so every a couple bars, you get reminded of whatever mistakes you made uh, in timing. And so uh, I started really working on that. And one of the ways that I worked on it was to, to use the, um, the digital delay setting on the looper because uh, most loopers can function as a digital delay as well. And uh, to try and um, use that to, to help train me in how to become a better uh, on-time looper. So I'm just going to demonstrate a song here tonight that just uses that feature and also uses some innovative guitar techniques. Um, I'm just going to switch guitar. Eyes half closed 
it's no one there at all. All this attention, feel it on your face. Come down, come talk to me. Say please, talk to me. You know they can talk to me. It's like it used to be. Talk to me. The silence, all the things we both might say. In the heart, it will not be denied till we're both on the same side. All the barriers to blow away. I said, Please talk to me. If you don't only really talk to me, just like it used to be, come down and talk to me. Don't you ever change your mind Your future's so defined And you act so deaf, so blind Come down and talk to me So basically all I'm really doing there is using the digital delay to kind of enforce tempo, <laughs> which is something we have to kind of get used to the idea of just kind of forcing tempos upon what we're playing so that we can learn how to imitate more, more uh, accurately the actual machine tempo of a metronome or of a drum machine or a really good drummer. And I actually studied some really good drummers, um, just li really listened to them, to watch their instructional videos, uh, guys like Steve Jordan, you know, uh, amazing, amazing drummer. Uh, Dennis Chambers, uh, people who can really play the drums and really find a great pocket for what they do. And that really just instructed me as to uh, how far off I'd kind of gotten with my own tempo and, and how I needed to kind of line up to, uh, to, to what, what everyone else was kind of uh, was, was doing. So it, all, it always helped when you're a band, too, to, uh, to be able to play in such a way that the drummer can relate to. But it's funny how audiences even if they're not really schooled in terms of um, music, and they're maybe not, don't have any musical training, they still, uh, from you know, decades of listening to music that's been laid out on a grid in the studio and has been just perfectly timed within an inch of its life, they have sort of this, uh, this template in their minds of what perfect time is. And I think um, they, when they, they know it when they hear it, you know? And so if you can kind of deliver that, something, at least something that's in, in its own pocket, uh, even if it's, it sort of varies a little bit and ripples time-wise throughout, if they can just kind of lay into a, a pocket that makes people want to either dance or move in some way, that's a good thing. What I'm using here is a, is a digital delay. I mean, if I just play it. And again, what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm just tapping on the fretboard, but I'm not just tapping anywhere. I'm trying to tap 12 frets 
above all the notes that I'm playing in the left hand. So if it's an open string, I'm tapping 12 frets above that, which in this case is capo one to fret 13, I'm trying to go for that. And that, and that way you get a note that's higher and more harmonically rich than just the standard notes that you hear. That's just the fundamental notes, but then... And if you add in the electric sound... And if you add in the digital delay on the acoustic, you get... Basically, it's kind of it's repeating what I play, but you can either hear that as one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, or you can hear it as I'm hearing it as one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So those are dotted eighth notes, uh, and uh, that's kind of producing syncopation essentially. It's it's creating uh, that naturally, and so that's kind of what I was doing in that song. Again, it was just a way of playing with time, playing with. Um, with groove and trying to establish kind of within yourself the sound of the band.